Hello. <laughs> so you're gonna hear a little bit more noise. Hi, Rebecca. Because I forgot my earbuds when I walked out the door. And there's this beautiful sound of an osprey that's right next to us up in its nest, actually. So I'm here along the waterfront with my little buddy. Hi, Rebecca. Hi, honey. And it's starting to get chilly. It was a gorgeous day. It's been a very busy day. I've gotten a lot accomplished and then a lot more still to do. So I, I guess the subject really came up because it kind of it tends to come up quite often. And for those of us who don't even realize, we do it to ourselves, okay? Um, if you watched on our business page, Ridiculously Authentic, earlier today, that um, I did the Kundalini challenge and I was, it was for relieving inner anger, which is powerful stuff, y'all. I can tell you, it, it burned. When I lifted my mat, there was, there was like sand, dirt, dust. Like I said, oh look, it's, it's the cinders, right? I burned it off, it left a mark underneath my mat. So, Rebecca, can you do me a favor? Can you share this video into the group? Ridiculously authentic, I would greatly appreciate that. Thank you very much. So, we don't realize when we do things to ourselves because quite often what happens is we are so caught up in what's going on around us, we don't look within. When we go without, go outside of ourselves, we are going without. And it really takes a lot of work and it's, it's dedication and devotion to doing a daily meditative practice. I don't care if you take five minutes. Thank you, darling. I appreciate you. If it takes five minutes to simply sit down, be calm, don't allow your thoughts to get caught up on what you need to be doing or what you should have done. That's past and, and pres in the future. It, the present is right here, right now. It's sitting with yourself am amidst all the craziness and just finding the calm. Listening to the landscape of sounds around you. You know, you can hear the sounds of the waves crashing up on the shore. You can hear the osprey. You can probably hear the cars driving by. Let that be there. But, and don't try to say, oh, I can't handle this because all these external distractions are taking me out of my peace. They're only taking us out of our peace because we're afraid to sit with it. We're afraid to calm our minds, to reflect within, to go, okay, I'm right here now in this. Because despite the chaos and the craziness of our lives and this daily activity that's happening all the time, this moment right here is precious. This moment that you have to sit and go, wow, the wind is on my skin. There's an amazing sunset. The smells wefting through the air. The, the water, the currents, the ripples. So much to appreciate in this moment here. As opposed to, oh, I had to set the clocks ahead so I lost an hour of sleep. Oh my gosh, I've lost so much time now and I've got so many things to do and all what I, I need to be doing that I'm not doing that isn't in the moment, it's in the future, it's, or it was in the past because I didn't get to it the last time. All of that's what causes the craziness. This is the monkey mind. I'm, I'm a subscriber. <laughs> right? I mean, we only know it because it's true for us. You can't look at anybody and, and say that you know about them without knowing it for yourself true first. And sometimes what you think you know about somebody else is really not even about that other person, but it's truly about you. When we go, oh, I bet you it's this. Well, you don't know unless you communicate with the individual, so never assume because you know what assuming does. And the idea that we, we got it all covered is all stuck up in the ego. The ego is the first thing to say, see, I told you so. See, I knew. See, I'm right. You're wrong. The ego can play these tricks on you and it can ruin your life if you let it. It can allow you to get caught up in the drama trauma of the stuff outside here that doesn't even exist unless you let it in. And when you let it in, now you've taken it on and made it personal, right? So quite often I know um, 
you know, looking at my past, looking at what I've been through, what I've experienced in my life, the things with me and my sisters, you know, what, how we grew up, the type of parenting we, we had. We learned different coping mechanisms. You know, I expressed to you about my belly and it's still very difficult and I'm still learning. And I'm also trying to rewrite those words as stories that when my stomach is upset it's not always just the food but it can be because I you know there, there's those connections that when my stomach is upset it's something in my emotional center that maybe it's still triggered maybe I still need to deal with and confront and express myself better and I'm still learning see this is the key we never stop learning we don't know it all thank you we don't know it all, and when we do, well, we'll probably be in the grave already anyway, and our, it'll be when we commune with the highest knowing of our, our soul, our being. So, with all the stuff that I grew up with, you know, that was one of the things. I would suppress my emotions. I didn't know how to express them because I didn't, I wasn't taught how to. And so when my parents didn't listen or give me the attention I needed, which they did the best they could with what they had at that time. I held on to it and so most of my life was about stomach problems. Most of my emotions are caught up in my belly, right, and digestion. And so a lot of things that I held on to in my belly and to my gut was, were things that I felt guilty for, felt ashamed for, and I blamed myself for, right? But here's the key. In certain cultures, to be ashamed of something is just, it's just a process you're supposed to go through to recognize, oh, look, I made an error. I can correct it. It's only for bringing awareness, not to live in the guilt, not to live in the shame, right? Nor should we shame others for anything they do. Because guess what? I hate to say this, but this is the truth. It's all another form of bullying. Whether you do it internally to yourself or you do it out externally to others. When you feel the need to be right up in the ego, all you're doing is satisfying this ego mind. It doesn't serve anyone, it doesn't serve you, and it doesn't serve anybody that you may project or, or impose it upon someone. So quite often, like I've said, excuse me, if you, hold on one second, down, down baby, down baby. Yes, I know you're so excited. He's so excited to be out today. The ego wants to be right the heart wants to be happy. Like I said the other day, the head, the mind, the ego is on a pedestal so that it can witness the heart, right? If the heart is, is able to express itself, the ego is in a position to be able to witness it. How we express ourselves through our arms, our hands, the prana, the extension, the life force, how we give love, we express ourselves comes from our hands, right? Most of us are doing things. This mind, this ego gets so caught up in wanting to be right, the body just tends to suffer. The heart suffers because it gets pressed down and suppressed. And we have to be very mindful of our thoughts, being very mindful of our words, our communication style, that we're not just trying to be right at all times, but that we're also trying to be loving at all times. Because that's being right when you're loving and releasing the need to to be the one who's right even so you can be doing it to yourself I'm not just talking about communication with other people and recognize love you too that for example growing up my father and my mother master manifestors and you don't realize how good you are at manifesting unless you really sit with your own actions, thoughts, and how they play out in your life. Here's a great example. It was never Murphy's Law that when something's gonna go wrong, it will. It, what it was is you being so attached to the idea that it wasn't you, that you, could, you just wanted to be right. It's how strong that ego mind is. 
that watch this. This is this bad thing is going to happen. Well, why not watch this? Look at this. Good thing's going to happen. That's how caught up in our shit we are. I'm sorry, but it's true. We get so caught up in the negativity because we have experienced so much of it that we don't recognize we can rewrite it and shift it around into positivity. We can actually change the way our life unfolds by looking at what has unfolded and saying, no, that, sh that stops now. That stops now and it stops now with me. Because when you make that conscious, devoted, dedicated effort to change, the universe is going to conspire to work with you on it. And sometimes it means surrendering and not knowing. It means surrendering and saying, oh, you know what? I'm not even going to try to figure this out. I'm just going to allow it. Because sometimes that's what we need to do. We need to get off our high pedestals and stools and, think, and stop thinking we know all the answers or that we have to know. There are moments we're going to go through these, these pauses, lulls in our lives. And we have to appreciate where, how far we've come. It's a time of reflection to not get caught up in the, oh my gosh, things aren't going the way I want them to. Because I don't know about anybody else, but usually in the past for me, when I feel like it's really like, what's going on? I can't determine it. I don't understand it. That's when I've been most self-destructive. And what I've done is caused more problems for myself, right? And I've caused relationship issues, communication issues with all sorts of people as a result. Mostly, I've caught myself feeling guilty and shaming myself and feeling ashamed of my ha actions and behaviors, right? And so I'm going to share an experience of what happened today and and I'm it goes back to again like I was just saying, my parents were such powerful manifestors. I've already expressed about how my mother would say to us children, I never want what happened to me to happen to you girls. And that was some powerful manifesting because she manifested exactly what happened to us girls as a result of not wanting it but being so fixated on the not wanting it that it drew it in because the universe only hears wanting. It doesn't hear the negated not or don't like or don't want. You have to be really attentive to notice these things in your own life. How often have you turned around and said, well, I don't want this to happen, and boom, it happens. Whereas, why not shift the verbiage, shift the attention? I want this to happen. When you start looking at what you want to happen, look at the menu. Choose what you want. Don't do process of elimination because you're giving more attention elsewhere and you're wasting energy and time that way. So with my father, my father is amazing with this one and he can be quite the negative person. And and I, I picked up, I mean, hello, uh, patterns. I, I So much of my life was easy to fixate and see what was wrong with something. Though at the same time, now I've used that to my benefit because I can see something quicker without getting attached to it and allowing myself to see a solution and how to handle it. But when I say this, and I'm going to use an example for, like, my dad, first off, didn't like to give us much money. I remember coming back and after I went in the Air Force, I didn't have a car. He had sold my car, gave it away to his, his daughter, his, his, his wife's daughter, who was totally... Um, unfortunately had no respect and was an ungrateful person because she had her her mother gave her everything she could ever want she didn't appreciate any of it and so my dad ended up giving them my car which had an oil a very tiny oil leak it was a Subaru GL wagon I used to call it my boobaroo and it was green my boobaroo was a cool car and I knew because it was my car to always check the oil well, she blew the block in the engine because she never checked the oil because she didn't know anything about cars and she was given a free ride once again and it wasn't her first car that her mother had given her for free, right? So going back, I went in the Air Force and I came back to visit my dad before I went back to my first duty station and he had bought himself a brand new truck because see, he didn't have to pay for me to go to college because he didn't he wanted me to go to Vassar College in New York because it was closer to him and he would have gotten the tax break and because money is a big fixation in the family too. 
So as a result, he goes and buys this brand new truck. And funny enough, it was green. And I asked him, can I take the truck out? And he says, don't get in an accident. Let me tell you how much I heard over the years in the course of my life, don't do this, don't do that. Like, now, I admit this, back then I lied. Back then I lied. But I was so ashamed because of the fact that I couldn't, I didn't prevent it, that I scratched the side of his truck. When my sister and I went to the mall, we, I accidentally scratched the side of the truck and I'm like, oh great. There I go, proving my dad right. Because his form of trying to, like I said, don't do this. And he brought that on. And sometimes he doesn't even verbalize it. But when you are already projecting that someone's going to do something wrong by just negating it with don't do this, because your attention is going on the, she's going to go out and she's going to scratch my truck, she, my brand new truck, she's going to do something wrong. And I'm just trying to be nice, but yet at the same time, I don't even want to give her the keys to the car. That kind of situation, right? I came home. He saw that, you know, of course I had to tell him. And I said, oh, someone hit the truck at the mall. Well, you know, I made up a story. But in the end, he's, he knew. And it didn't even matter whether it was true or not. If I, he hasn't believed me even when sometimes I've told him the truth. So either way, does it matter? No, but he, his ego is strong and his ego is right. And how, is, how happy do you think my dad is? Not as, bad, not as happy as I'd like to think he is. Because the thing is, is when you let your, your, your ego overrun your heart, you suffer, you suffer. And that's where a lot of heart problems come in, right? So something started out the day where, and I felt it, there was, there was kind of a tension, and it was a weird tension, and I made a mistake. But here's the thing. While I was doing this, in the process, because I felt this tension coming up, and I, have, I actually have soreness on my left side, my neck is kind of tweaked. Because I felt this, I was trying really, really hard. It wouldn't look like it on the outside. I was trying really, really hard not to make a mistake because I was being watched. But I already felt like the the watcher was anticipating me making the mistake and, I, and it might have been on such a subtle level the person didn't even know they were doing it. And then I made the mistake that I didn't anticipate because I thought I, caught, I thought I had everything covered. I thought I did everything right and I hit the button. You know, I proceeded forward and the mistake happened and I'm like, are you kidding me? I tried so hard to not make a mistake. And then that happened. And then the person got upset with me. And I was like, damned if I do, damned if I don't. Sometimes a person can be so powerful in manifesting, they don't see it because they're already anticipating it. And, and truly, it, I, you know what? I'm not even gonna call it a psychic attack. It has nothing to do with me. It has to do with internal trust of, of an individual too. So when someone turns around and they're anticipating you making a mistake, that, ha that starts with self. That doesn't start with the external person. When we don't wanna let go of the reins of control, because that's what this ego mind wants, the ego mind wants to control every aspect of what you're doing and everyone around you. So, and I know this from my personal experience and I've seen it because I do it. My kitchen, I just rather do things because certain things make me happy if I know that I, I just do them. And so that's just fine with me. And that comes from my heart because I know it'll make me a lot less stressed. That's just me. Now, there is a downfall to that because then what you do is you lack the trust of the other person if they feel you're always watching for you to make a mistake. It also means that you're not giving up control and empowering people to do things that maybe one mistake is all it takes for them to learn the lesson and to move forward and to prove that, you know what, it is okay to give up reins. Because when we think we have to do everything ourselves, we will do everything ourselves. And that's an old paradigm from the patriarchal society, the old, you want something done right, you better do it yourself. That's what my dad always used to say. If you want something right, you, you're better off doing it yourself. I mean, how does that serve? People wanna help one another. People wanna feel connected. They wanna commune. They wanna feel that, that 
that community, right? We want to and contribute. That's a that's part of the, the human need to can be able to contribute, to uplift, to inspire through interaction, engagement. If someone wants to do something for you, you should allow them that opportunity to do it. Maybe they won't do it the way you want it to, but the more you're willing to give up the reins of control and allow them to step in to help you, you may find they, they may surprise you. Because if you're anticipating people doing things wrong, because maybe you don't trust yourself enough to let them do it, it's gonna bite you in the ass. I'm just saying. Um, it, and it does. So going back to, it's another form of bullying. And they, in most people, it's so subtle you don't realize it. So when you make a mistake and somebody has, this has happened, because I, in, I immediately got the, why did you do that? I don't understand. Like, and I corrected myself. I said, listen, I made a mistake, and sometimes that's what it takes for me to learn a lesson. Now I know it won't happen again. But see what happens is if you're so caught up in the mind it's really hard to hear the other person you're just continuously on this track and this track is is not sell it's not serving what it is it's the ego and the ego getting its it's it's five five minutes of, of fame let's say where the ego can go off and go see you proved me right see how'd you dare look at what you did see I knew you were gonna mess it up and you don't even realize you've done it but the bottom line is, is you suffer. Both the person who has that and the person it's projected upon, you both suffer because that, that's a breakdown of communication. Instead of the compassionate side that would say, you know what, that person doesn't need to explain anything to me because I can't control them making the mistake or not. And maybe I had something to do with that, I don't know. These are the humbling aspects of communication. Conscious communication also requires two people to go, oh, I'm sorry, okay, maybe I need to step back and listen for a moment, as, as opposed to attack and assume. Because here's the thing, then it turns into, why don't, you just made a mistake, and you need to own your mistake, and it's all your fault. Okay, uh, whoa, 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 back up. That's shaming and trying to guilt and manipulate, and it's a form of bully, bullyism. When you feel the need to push it onto someone that they have to explain themselves to you, you're bullying them, you're shaming them, and nobody deserves that. None of us want that. Even if a person doesn't admit it outright and they know in themselves, that's, that's their relationship they have to work with. If a person makes a mistake, the most important relationship they have is with themselves. I made a mistake. I am aware of it. But you have no need to explain yourself to another person. There's always, Elizabeth, there's always hope and you can heal from this in a relationship. Totally. If someone tries to get you to explain yourself to them, you really need to sit with it and go, whoa, 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 whoa. We tend to want to explain ourselves to the ones we love the most because we love them. And we want them to understand and see where we're coming from. But sometimes it's not always perceived as a question that needs answering. Your ego wants the explanation. Your heart is saying, I accept you as you are. I get it, it's okay. All right, shit happens. Let's move on from this. Hopefully this doesn't happen again, it's all good. I'm still gonna love you no matter what, and without the but. Because here's the bottom line. When someone turns it around on you, and you already feel bad because you made the mistake, how is that gonna serve the relationship between the two of you? You move forward from it or you don't. If you get stuck on the idea that you need to say, I made a mistake, I need to tell you a million times, I'm sorry, I made a mistake, you're only hurting yourself. And that ego is just going to continue to get bigger and bigger. And yeah, you know what? Why I don't go away, go out away from bullies? Carla, you, you're not a bully. I bet you're probably a big soft pussy cat. Nikki, and you know we feel horrible when we make mistakes enough. I know for myself because I'm already hypercritical. And like I said, this 
this happening today, I was like, oh my gosh, I swear, I swear I thought I did everything I possibly could to avoid making a mistake because I felt the tension. And then the minute it happened, I was like, I'm fucked. Because then it came out and I'm like, I didn't expect it to come out like that. And when it did, I was like, uh-oh, buddy's coming to love on me because he's... <laughs> you need to sit down. Sit, 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 sit. <laughs> I'm sorry. Down. He's so beautiful. He's so sweet. He reminds me it's all good. So bottom line is though, um, if someone tries to make you feel guilty for something, you also have to take a deep breath and ask yourself, do I owe this person an explanation? Do I need to go into this, this blame shame game? Because I don't need the guilt anymore from somebody else, let alone I'm already bad enough on guilting myself. So yeah, guilt, it, it, it's, it's usually an internal job and nobody needs to do it. None of us should be living in regret or guilt at all. Again, it's an opportunity to learn and move forward. And there's a lot of stuff going on in the, in the atmosphere. I mean, okay, Jupiter just went retrograde. Jupiter's all about expansion. Uh, we got Mars and Sag. It's all about taking action. But, but Saturn's saying slow down. It's quiet. Facebook's act, doing some strange and unusual things that nobody can predict. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. But I tell you what, I want to be happy right here, right now. Mistakes happen. And we're not talking about the kind of life or death mistakes either here, people. You know, they say, what is it? Um, uh, only ha happens with sh horseshoes and hand grenades. What was it? Almost. Almost doesn't count, except for in horseshoes and hand grenades. Almost doesn't count. So these ideas, and I feel, you know what, Cheryl, there, massive energy of love is always here. It's just when we, we reach, this is my theory, you got to grab on tight to that massive love energy now. Don't worry about when it's coming in. You got to get on top of it now. Thank you, Carl. I love you so much for that. <laughs> it truly is all about us just being right with ourselves first. If for any reason you find yourself being on the giving end of a bullying statement that says, you need to explain yourself to me, I don't understand, and then also being in that attacking mode, trying to guilt the person, shame them into giving you a, what you would consider a rational explanation, that in itself is showing you're stuck in your mind and something inside is telling you you're not comfortable with you and so it's easier to put it on the other person. And the biggest thing is, is that a lot of times we anticipate people, we anticipate the worst in people. And if we anticipate the worst, what do you think we're going to receive? If we're willing to anticipate the unanticipatable, expect the unexpected, hold a person in a higher regard that, you know what, it's very possible they could surprise me and make me like light up with joy with their actions. And so again, your closest relationships are the toughest because you think you know that you think they you know that person so well that now you just don't want to have to think about what they're going to do you hold them in the box of this is all they've always done so i shouldn't expect anything different you should always expect like you're in you're interacting with a brand new person you've never met before give them the opportunity to show up like you you don't even know them they'll surprise you every time whenever you detach from the expectation of how someone's going to show up in your life to you in your life you're going to be surprised and that's what truly is authentic love right being humble being uh, present with you knowing that you're doing the best you can do is all that matters it's a touchy subject when the ego gets in, involved and it wants to compartmentalize and control the situation. Because in the end, it's all that's all the ego wants. The, the ego wants to control everything. The ego, the mind, it's like, look at this. Hmm. And if it doesn't have control, it'll try to validate itself as if it had control to begin with. It'll also try to validate your behavior when you act out, when you try to shame or bully someone into telling you something. 
it'll later turn around and say, well, you need to own up and, and, and admit it. Why? Who is that for? Is it for the person that's on the receiving end or the, or the person who is projecting it onto you? Because when it boils down to it, the ego is involved in it. Because the heart would say, you know what, it's all good. Yes, ego is edging God out. Edging goodness out, right? Edging God and goodness out. Because it's, it's unfortunately, it's just meant to be your servant. But, but we're enslaved by this ego when we're in that space, aren't we? We're letting it run the show. And we are the ones that suffer. So just keep in mind, again, cultures use shame and blame simply as a tool to learn a lesson and move on from it, not to get stuck in it or to continue to hold on to it because then what happens is the more you have that same incident repeat itself because of course you're still attached to it or it wouldn't keep reappearing, triggers happen that way, right? The more you anticipate someone to do the same thing over and over again, they're going to continue to do the same thing over and over again because that's your form of appreciation. Where attention goes, energy flows. And so I'd like to leave you all with this soulful Sunday reflection, the sounds of the osprey up overhead. Be kind. Just be kind. If you have nothing nice to say, go within and find your heart space and find something to be beautifully gra grateful for and appreciate. If you have someone you love, just tell them you love them. That's all that's necessary. They don't have anything to prove to you and you don't have anything to prove to them. The beauty is, is that when love comes together in its most authentic form, both, let's say two people, People tend to show up so much more powerfully in, a, in that expression of love. There's no need to attach to an outcome. I can speak for myself that if someone asks me to do something, it's very rare I will ever say no, and nor will I turn around and make a fit or a fight about it. When you catch me off guard, if I'm standing in the kitchen and haven't eaten anything yet, and you try to catch me to do something else, well, maybe I need to eat my food first. But again, love is kind and compassionate and unassuming. Love requires attention, mindfulness. And if you want love, you have to be open to receiving it just as much. So don't be a bully to yourself or others. Let go of the shame and the blame there's no guilt necessary. I love you all. I hope you have an amazing evening. Night, night.